YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I'm Avelina Damore and today I'm doing a video that I've wanted to do for about five years. I've been in this house now for seven years and honestly, I've been reworking my bedroom for about that long. But I'm finally at the point where I really enjoy what I've done with this little area and I'm excited to share it with you all. So as you can see from the spooky fluoro green lighting behind me, that might be a little bit of an indication that we are today going to be doing a gothic bedroom tour. I've always had an inclination for the gothically inclined and macabre aesthetic, and you'll definitely see that in my bedroom. So now that I have things the way that I want, I'm really excited to open the double doors behind me. <laughs> double doors, if you're a fan of Sex and City, you might pick up on that little reference there. <laughs> uh, anyway, come on in and check out my gothic bedroom. bed i was so surprised when i walked into an australian store called spotlight and i found this bedspread that was the exact color of the lounge and the vanity chair and the little stool at the end of the bed like exactly the same i'm like what the fuck are the chances it's even the same kind of crushed velvet so i was very lucky because i do like to match things so if you're wondering how <laughs> i got that to match so perfectly it was just absolutely a coincidence but i'm really pleased that that happened it came with these lovely huge european pillows i think a lot of pillows always make a bed look really comfy and cozy these circular ones as well they just look so elegant they used to be crazy expensive but now i've noticed in stores in australia they're selling them now for like ten dollars and fifteen dollars they really used to be like a luxury item that you could only get at higher end home decor stores so i'm pleased that they've realized it's just a fucking circle pillow and it's not like a piece of gold, you know? <laughs> Here I have my teddy. Yes, I love sleeping with my teddy, especially when my boys are not with me, when they spend time with their dad. It is really lovely to have a little snuggle buddy. I do have a pet, but it's a bearded dragon. I might actually go and get her so you can see Willow. Uh, we got her when she was only three weeks old and she's now a month shy of being a year old. And it's just been so beautiful watching her grow and seeing the boys with their first pet as well. Bedside table, pretty fucking boring. Just like phone charger. This I want to mention, I'm in love with Honey Birdette. I love their lingerie, but this little candle here is called Red Dragon Peach and Opium. It's a soy massage candle. It is pure heaven in a bottle, seriously. And the packaging of this is just insane. Like I would expect nothing less from Honey Birdette. Whatever is in here is just like pure aphrodisiacs and it's some kind of massage candle where you can light it and then pour it onto the skin and it's hot but it's not like candle wax where it will literally burn you it's um it's a nice hot <laughs> here i've also got this organic spray what is this rose geranium grapefruit and clary sage so just before bed before I meditate, every night I meditate. I don't specifically have one kind of meditation that I do. I, I will usually go for a guided meditation. I've been rotating from Eckhart Tolle to Joe Dispenza's heart-brain coherence or sometimes the time-space meditation that he does. Um, I might listen to Abraham Hicks, her nighttime or bedtime rant to get me in a place of gratitude before I go to sleep. I'm really big on smells. I'll just spray this and then meditate and it just puts me in a really calm, relaxed state which is ultimately how you want to be as you're drifting off to sleep. I don't like to be stressed. <laughs> and of course, I got a photo of my beautiful boys there so I can look at them when I wake up. And a little photo of me. This is baby Avalina. <laughs> look, we've still got the same fringe. <laughs> Why is that cute? Uh, it's hilarious. Although, like, I gotta look at her bangs, man. I know it's me and I'm saying her, but I'm like, wow, like, they're on point. Like, my hair is definitely 
not as well maintained as back then. <laughs> Another lovely addition to my bedroom, of course, is the chandelier. I was inspired to do this by a friend of mine on Instagram. Her username is Little Lady Wolf. I will also tag her down below. We actually got the same bed from Horn, and I think we got it at the same time. We got a few pieces of furniture that were similar as well, and she mounted the chandelier under her bed, and I was like, that is fucking insane. I have to do that. So sometimes our bedrooms get um, mistaken because there are, again are a few noticeable similarities between her and, and my aesthetic. So if you like what I'm doing, definitely go and check hers out. And no, the chandelier is not going to fall on me. Like we were smart about it, you know, like some people are like, oh, <laughs> what happens when the bed shakes and on your headstone, it's going to say death by chandelier. It's securely fixed into a beam. We found where the fucking, you know, girders were to actually mount it smart. So if you are going to put a chandelier that is crystal and heavy above your head, mount it correctly. That is my advice for you. I'm sure a lot of you will ask as well where I got these massive LED crosses. They're at least maybe a meter 20, I guess. So that was from a store in eBay. Now, if you search church display or LED crucifix, I'm sure they will come up. They weren't cheap. They were a few hundred dollars each, but I absolutely love the look of them. This is the Graham and Brown wallpaper before I painted some of it white. And it has that beautiful flocking effect. So it's black on black. It's like a lighter black <laughs> with a darker black. And these curtains here were just like $5 off eBay. They are completely sheer. They just add a little bit of luxury. All right, let's check out the next area of the bedroom. and I got it hmm, probably about four or five years ago now. If you have a look on my YouTube channel there is an unboxing where I first got this furniture so five years later it's um it's still holding up it has a few chips and stuff like that from wear and tear. The only thing I wish that this vanity came with was a glass top because it's just it gets so dirty and dusty from all the makeup and foundation and things like that. I think it would have been a really nice touch to have a glass top but that's definitely something that I can get cut myself in the future. If you don't have one of these, I think you should get a makeup vanity. It absolutely changed my life. It changed how I put on my makeup and it really feels like a moment of self-love for me now. I love having all my shit organized. I've got these beautiful little dishes here, more black and gold theme throughout my whole bedroom. And I've got my most used brushes here. I've got some mascaras and eyeliner pencils and my favorite lipsticks. Easily accessible earbuds for when I fuck up my eyeliner, which is like nearly every single time I do it. A little tub of mascaras. This light changed my life. It's like a touch light. My other one was running on batteries and it was always running out. So that's just a nice little feature. When I get to the point of finishing my makeup with my setting spray, I absolutely love using this fan. It's just, <laughs> it makes me go straight into 1920s vibe. And it's really quite practical. If you haven't tried that before, spray your face and then mm, it's a really nice sensation. I'm really into sensations if you haven't noticed by watching this video, but I love the, <laughs> I love the wetness on my face. It's, oh, I love it. <laughs> and then I like the fan feeling it uh, dry and knowing that my makeup is set for the fucking day. <laughs> Recently, I've been using this foundation by Juice Beauty, the organic solution. I have to say, this is my favorite foundation that I've ever used. Mind you, I have a fucking lot of them here. I have like this massive refill that my mom gave me of Clinique that I used to use. I've got Fenty Beauty, there's Kat Von D here. I don't have Jeffree Star. Has he come out with a foundation yet? If he has, I'm super keen to try it. Marc Jacobs, a lot of really high-end brands. And um, this one wasn't, it wasn't crazy expensive, like it wasn't crazy cheap either, but I'm just loving the full finish with the really light feel and most of all that it's all organic, that really impressed me. 
just you know as well as spraying wet shit on my face I really like putting healthy stuff on my face as well <laughs> cause I wear so many dark colours I've got a myriad of uh, I don't know why the fuck I have so many but these are like lip scrubs um, one of these is lemon Ooh, just I love lemon the tartier the better so when I need to take them off I just use that I was sent these brushes recently that resemble an octopus tentacle I love that they're green and they've kind of got this matte finish that I just fucking adore it's beautiful another set of brushes that I really enjoy using are the fancy brushes as well I've got these charming little dishes that I don't know what you're supposed to use them for I think they're actually candle holders and you're supposed to put a tea light candle in them but I just I use them for my brushes I think they look dope as well the drawers are really really practical as well I couldn't even tell you oh old driver's license you know what I do with that when I need to like separate my lashes I've always got that in there and I'll, I'll shove it under I'm sure there's like something that someone has invented that's better than <laughs> what I'm doing but I, I put it under my lower lashes and then I use the mascara to separate I've never been able to master that like I see some girls on YouTube and they've just got these meticulously separated and defined lower lashes and they're not fake either it's their natural lashes and I'm like wow how are you doing that tell me how to do it so in the drawers here I've got my makeup palettes uh, ones that I go to the most often so this is Venus XL by Lime Crime I absolutely love their formulas I've got quite a few I've got the Venus palette as well um, I've got the Huda Beauty one as well. This looks very similar though to this one. I don't know, they're kind of in competition with each other. I've got a few Fenty Beauty ones and a Kat Von D shade and light. And this is my second Jeffree Star one. Absolutely love his stuff as well. The pigmentation of the colors is just incredible. The only thing I don't like. I mean, I'm at a stupid angle, so that's not really fair, but they, they don't slide in. Something that could have made this vanity a lot better is rather than it just being painted wood that kind of gets stuck, is if they had to put runners on them. That would be next level. In here I've got, oh, my highlighter that I fucking forgot to put on today. Uh, my contour milk makeup. Mahavsoon, my beautiful friend from Canada, how are you darling? She put me onto this and I haven't stopped using it since got blush I'm also using this setting powder also by juice beauty and on this side I swear to god it's all fake lashes and lipsticks I have too many lipsticks I put them in the drawers it looked messy as fuck to just put everything on the vanity I'm like it just was chaotic and I it didn't like I couldn't find anything and I was just like so busy so now I really only put my favorite things up on the vanity little section here is my fireplace and ever since I've seen Kat Von D do the marvelous candles on top of her fireplace I kind of wanted to copy her but I haven't quite got it looking as spectacular as she did she had like hot pink candles I think and they just overflowed and were brilliant and I think I need a, a few more to get that kind of effect up here we have some of my favorite artworks from an artist called Terry Wolffinger I saw his artworks when I was at Hollywood in 2018 and I just fell in love. I was absolutely in awe with the way in which he portrayed and captured some of my favorite characters out of some of my favorite horror movies. Here we've got Beetlejuice, Frankenstein, Freddy Krueger, Maleficent over here. I love fluoro green. If you haven't <laughs> known that about me, I fucking love fluoro green. The rings I'm wearing, a little bit of shameless self-promotion. Here is my vamp ring in fluoro green. I just I love green now this guy here I think he's an antelope uh, correct me if I'm fucking wrong I, I could totally fuck that up but he was white the black witch sign that you see right here actually was custom made by a Etsy seller in um, America I went to a local trash and treasure type store in Tamworth and the lady had it up on the wall and out of the whole warehouse I was like I want that and would you believe it that it was the one thing that was not for sale in the whole fucking s and it was a big warehouse I was like what are the fucking odds anyway I found an Etsy seller that I will list below and he was kind enough to remake it for me and I had it gold to kind of match the gold bars that are now going through my room Here we have my altar. 
I grew up watching shows like Charmed and Bewitched and as soon as I was old enough to create something like this for myself, I did. <laughs> now what I'd like to do here is meditate. So I've got some candles that I light if I want to set an actual intention before I meditate. I find that really, really helpful. These are beautiful beeswax candles that I ordered from an occult shop in Croatia, I think. I'll find out where it was, but I got some beautiful stuff from that store, including these candles as well, that I just love. The traditional rolled beeswax look. Mm. And you can't beat the smell of actual beeswax candles. This is a little Zippo lighter. I don't smoke, but I've always wanted one of these, and I actually bought it for someone who was becoming a good friend of mine, but they turned out to be an arsehole, so I didn't give it to them, and I kept it for myself. <laughs> Here I like to journal as well, so you can see I've got this quill. I fucking suck, like, I don't know if you've tried, <laughs> there's more to that statement. <laughs> I fucking suck. <laughs> oh, I gotta work on my mantras, don't I? But what I was about to say is I suck at writing with a quill and ink. It's really, really difficult and I've got this gorgeous journal here that my best friend gave me. Um, mm. Oh, it smells so good. And when I, again, meditate or have things on my mind to journal, I'll sit down here and I do attempt to use this, but it's it's not very nice. <laughs> what happened though, I don't know if you can see here. Yeah, I'll film a close up so you can see it. But this gorgeous candle here kind of had a little fucking accident and exploded all over my beautiful table. And I just never cleaned it up because I love how it looks. It just looks like a volcano and I'm fascinated by volcanoes and any kind of movies that have um, disaster CGI effects like 2012. <laughs> so when I saw this, I'm like, oh my God, there's a little volcano on my table. I'm just gonna leave it because it looks amazing. Another really cool thing uh, that happened that was like a byproduct of this little wax eruption here was that it exploded all over the little beautiful holder that you can no longer see of the quill. And it was quite unsteady. So now <laughs> the quill just sits in there and the ink as well. Um, and they're not fucking going anyway. So it, it, it actually worked out really, really well. <laughs> There's also one of these little wax imprints. I've always wanted one of these. It came with some wax. Oh, I mean, there's there's no shortage of wax in my house, so I could <laughs> easily find some of the wax to use. But I've always loved that symbol, and I'm actually working on a ring that I think might be my second or third design. Um, my first being my vamp ring that will incorporate this symbol. It's a beautifully classic, classy design, and I've got something really simple in mind. I love the crackle of an open flame. When I meditate, I also like to burn incense. I'm really big on smell and visuals. There we go. Smell is such a strong sense. Can you remember when you, know, you might have been walking somewhere and then the smell of lavender just takes you? Uh, it's like a, a fucking time warp. It just takes you into a, another dimension or a memory. And if I'm sitting down to meditate, I like to be really conscious about that and set myself up in this really beautiful space. When I sit here, I get like with all the gold, it's kind of like Moroccan ancient occult vibes. I, I love it that I, I really feel like I step out of being in 2022 and step into another time and the smells as well and even just looking at the way in which the smoke there it's it's hypnotizing. <laughs> I've always found smoke beautifully erotic it's just so free. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and yeah the, the sounds of the, the candle and the, the smells it's just like all my senses are enticed and it actually helps me slip into a deep meditation really really quickly. Here I have a giant shell that my mom gave me. <laughs> I love that. I'll usually put music on if I meditate, but that's just there for sentimental purposes. easily accessible and displayed here for your viewing pleasures. <laughs> this is my newest one. Ah, oh, fuck, she's beautiful. 
It's an ESP Eclipse and again black and gold is something that features throughout my whole bedroom and yeah it doesn't surprise me that I'm also finding this quite beautiful on guitars and also jewellery. I'm a silver person but I'm finding myself really digging gold here which is super unusual for me because I've never worn gold my whole life and now just suddenly <laughs> I'm like I'm really liking that so expect to see some of the rings that I'm designing available in solid gold as well. And if you haven't been to my website to check out some of my products, what are you waiting for? If you've been following me on Instagram for a while, you know I love my tea. I don't do anything without drinking tea. And I also run a little website where I design gothic handbags and accessories. And I've started to go into jewelry, as I've mentioned a few times as well. This is the phenomenal Danny Divine Cop and Clutch, designed in collaboration with Danny herself. If you don't know who Danny Divine is, she is one of the biggest alternative models currently hitting our little fucking planet. <laughs> She's a burlesque model. She does these wonderful strip teases in the vein of Dita Von Tees, but more saucy and to metal music, which is awesome. She breathes fire. She looks like a living doll. I'm so honored to be working with her. But what got my attention the most with this adorable woman is her work ethic. She is post every single day I've never known anyone to be so committed to what they're doing as her so it's such an honor to work with her and I've got an entire line with Danny and I've worked with other people like Black Friday and many other cool people in the alternative industry and I hope to move into working with musicians Ash Costello if you're listening <laughs> hit me up girl over here I have these little tea light candles that smell delicious these were a present from my best friend Nadia. I know I love that my girls, my best friends know what to get me for presents and it's usually like either lingerie vouchers or, or lingerie because they know what exactly to buy me. Books, which is a lovely thing, journals or candles, anything to do with scents, I just love. Did I just burn my nose? Like <laughs> I sniffed that shit so close, I'm like, is there ash on my nose? Right, so we've got two acoustic guitars here. This is a brand called Alvarez. I hadn't heard of it. I'm really impressed with that little guitar. I like it because it's small. The smallest acoustic I have is this Taylor here. It is a 7-8 scale guitar or a parlor size. I first noticed parlor guitars when I fell in love with LP. If you haven't heard of LP, go and check out the song specifically, Lost On You. Such a fucking beautiful song. And she was using these tiny little guitars. And I'm like, what is that? It's adorable and practical, right? Travel size, it's a smaller case, everything's just lighter. So in 2013, I went to America and I tried some tailors and it was revolutionary really, because I was like, wow, the acoustic I currently had, which, you know, I love, I fucking love Ibanez, but I think it wasn't set up right or it was a cheaper end. It just, it kind of like the neck was really thick. It was just, it st I struggled to play it. It made everything really difficult when it shouldn't have been difficult and anyway my first experience with a really nice high-end um, acoustic was Taylor and I just played it and I'm like ah oh, be still my dead heart and it's just beautiful and this little guy has a really rich dark tone for how small it is I think it's got a koa top but yeah I love playing it it plays itself and I've got it tuned to C sharp standard as well so it's like lotus fog vibes that I love. Now this one here is the aforementioned ESP. Oh, isn't she pretty? <laughs> and yes, she's a girl. I named her Shirley. It's so funny. I guess because I love garbage. It just came to me. I just picked her up and I went, hey Shirley, how you doing? <laughs> and I just sit here and I write. I sit here and I write. I meditate over there. I really enjoy being by myself. And if, if you don't enjoy being by yourself, it's probably because you're not in contact with your true self or your passions, you know, because I'm really enjoying spending time by myself. Obviously, I enjoy connecting with people as well. And that's super, super important. But I never, in retrospect, used to enjoy myself as much as I do now. And I think that's because I'm so aligned with my passions. I'm not bored. You know, I'm literally excited to be myself and spend some time with me, which just sounds so, so funny when you say it like that. Like, yeah, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm just going to spend some time with me. You know, we're going to hang out. We're going to self-love. Um, we're going to write some songs. Why are you talking about yourself in third person? Hmm, just kind of feels right, you know? <laughs> anyway, I've been writing some songs. I've been recording some music. I'm doing it all myself over here on this little studio that I'm gonna show you next. It's so exciting. It's so liberating to be working on something. Um, many projects really, like creatively, I've got my business, my website, designing handbags, now going into jewelry, working on my own music. I just, I feel like I'm on a fucking 
Yes, believe me. Creative role. <laughs> I got a designated jar just to put my picks in because I swear to god there's two things that I cannot find in this house and one of them are my picks so I've got like 20 of them in here <sighs> and the other one is a lighter I'm always lighting candles and I can't find them so bought a very specific jar so I would always know where they are <laughs> yeah I've been working on a lot of songs uh, demoing a lot over the last year I'm finally at the point where I'm going to release something which is super fucking exciting it's been a hot little minute um, since I've released and recorded some music I've got my little orange amp down there it's just a little combo amp what I love about this guitar is that it reminds me of uh, probably the second guitar that I bought myself which was a blue BC rich and I bought it because I was in love with Killing Heidi, an Australian band, um, at the time when I was like 16. And yeah, the, the brother of Ellie, or Ella, I should say, Ella Hooper, um, played this same guitar. And I just, I love the large inlays on the fretboard. And yeah, I find guitars that I like to play always have that. And I just think that they're beautiful. I would just hang guitars all over my wall if I could. <laughs> is the riff to an upcoming song of mine called Like a Drug. I've had so much fun putting all of these songs together and re kind of connecting with the guitar, which is, it really was my first love. Like seriously, before I fell in love with the first guy I fell in love with, I fell in love with this beautiful instrument and I kind of forgot it for a little while. So it's been a lot of fun just kind of getting back to it and playing and uh, yeah, it's been a really big change because about three years ago I started writing again, but it was on piano. So I'll take you over there. And obviously writing on a piano makes you write very differently. I was trying to go down the path of um, sounding like one of my biggest idols, which was Lana Del Rey. And um, going back to guitars definitely pulled me away from that. It's also helped me find myself so beautifully and completely because that's where it all started for me. It was always about guitar. I grew up with Daniel Johns on my wall, with uh, Eddie Van Halen, with Eddie Vedder. I love Pearl Jam. My parents listen to Fleetwood Mac, Queen, Freddie Mercury is one of my biggest idols. I love Alice Cooper. <laughs> Such a cool little story, but I just want to mention it, that um, I used to do live band photography years and years ago, and I befriended Kerry Kelly, the guitarist at the time. I think he still plays for Alice Cooper. Anyway, here's one of my live shots of Alice Cooper playing at the Sydney Entertainment Centre, and he actually gave one to Alice as well, and he liked it so much, Alice asked for one for his mother. <laughs> it's a crazy fucking story, but yeah. Somewhere in Phoenix, Arizona, Alice Cooper has one of my photos of the band performing on his wall. How fucking cool is that, man? So the philosophy of aesthetic and uh, presenting oneself to the world is a beautiful thing. There was kind of part of me that always just thought, I'm like, wow, I'm really, like, maybe I'm really vain because I'm into, like, styling shit so much. And I, I really had to sit with that for a little minute, especially when I started to get spiritual. I'm like, is all this stuff just stuff? And do I need it? What, what is it doing in my life? And I really had to separate myself from it. And when I came back to it after about six months of meditation, I decided very consciously that my aesthetic, how I dress myself, how I present myself to the world, how I stylize my room was all part of my personality, you know, and it gets me closer to who I want to be, who I who I am, who I are. <laughs> the being, like the the true essence of me is all of this stuff, and I'm okay with that, you know. I don't think I'm a materialist, but I definitely like surrounding myself with things that remind me of my goals and my passions and my creativity and my sexuality and my sensuality and all of this stuff is very purposefully is that a word purposefully purposefully chosen and consciously makes me feel like a better version of myself and i'm always striving to become the best version of myself i don't know if you've noticed but up here <laughs> on my beautiful couch there's these bats here one two three they're kind of like gargoyle bats like they're totally bats obviously but their faces are more like traditional gargoyles and this is definitely my favorite piece of furniture in this. Oh fuck, did I say that about the vanity? And then I look at the bed, I'm like, ah! <laughs> I love it all. It's definitely a set 
um, the color schemes have matched, like the stool matches the maroon or the blood red velvet that I selected here, which matches the bedding on that bed and the little bedside ending stool thing that really never gets used. I, I don't know what that's there for. Uh, people don't sit at the end of it. Like, I pose on it, but there's really no practicality for having that there other than it just looks dope as fuck and I'm totally down with that. <laughs> I'm so glad that I finally gotten around to doing this fucking video. <laughs> it's been, like, I had to refilm it. I'm not gonna go into the details as to why I had to do that. But second time round, when I do shit, it's usually for the better. And it's been, like, this is like eight hours in. Um, and I'm doing it all by myself, so it's it's a massive undertaking, but I'm really enjoying it. I really get off on um, on lighting and cinematography, so yeah, it's, it's fucking exciting. I hope you're enjoying this video as much as I'm enjoying filming it. Okay, so this is my little studio section. It just started as my piano, my electric grand piano that I play, um, and then I although the room is quite spacious i ran out of room and i had a studio outside previously but it was just too hard to work on music at night and in winter to go out of the house when i put the fire on it just seemed more conducive creatively to actually put the studio in my little space so yeah that's what we have here i've got a little song up that i'll play you it is the studio version of the riff that i was playing before for an upcoming song called like a drug I don't want to give too much away because like the song isn't even out yet but I figure I should give you guys a little teaser because I've been working on shit for so long and like so many of you message me on Instagram and Facebook and my website and you're like when the fuck is it coming I have been working on it shit's been going really really well it just it takes a lot of time and you know I run a business as well I've got two small boys so you know life's busy I'm going as fast as I possibly can <laughs> one thing I love in this little area here is this gun lamp it's just so pulp fiction to me as soon as I saw it Again, the black and the gold, it kind of makes me realize like how much I like these colors, but didn't really kind of realize it. And all it really took was me looking around my room and going, holy fucking shit, there's a lot of black and gold in here. Maybe I should try that in jewelry. Yeah, isn't that dope as fuck? Over here, I've got a little elephant because you know, when an elephant's trunk is up, it's good luck, so. <laughs> and the wallpaper that you see behind you was actually black. The brand of wallpaper that I put up in most of my room is by the brand Graham and Brown. A lot of you ask me where I get that. And if you want to know what happens if you paint it white, you get this awesome effect. I just used white, flat, matte wall paint. And I thought when I first did it, I'm like, oh my God, I've totally fucked this wallpaper up it went completely white <laughs> what were you expecting <laughs> painting it white right but overnight what kind of happened is the paint sunk into the velvet blocking and as you can see it, it ended up being two-toned which is more what i wanted so i was really pleased with that i especially love that i've done my vanity wall white that was previously black as well with exposed brickwork and as soon as i painted it white and i popped my led colors on it that you guys know i love to fuck with you may notice it <laughs> in every shot i'm just having so much fun setting up the lighting and stuff so comment down below if you've enjoyed visually how appealing i think i've, I've tried to make this um video for you and I hope it's inspiring as well. This stuff isn't dear. You can get LED lights now on eBay for like $10 for five meters. Yeah, just go to your local hardware shop and buy some LED strip lighting. And if you, especially if you've got a light wall, if you've got a white wall, that can add so much ambience and personality. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little close up of some of my favorite things in this area and then we're gonna move on. This beautiful piece here was given to me by my good friend Ness. She's in England. She runs a business that she's just started called Skull Noir. If you love this kind of thing where you've got all different types of skulls painted beautifully um, in antique frames to display, yeah, go and check out her page on Instagram. Send her some love. I'm just so thankful that she sent me this and I can't wait to find somewhere special for it in my house. 
Onto my bookshelf now, down the bottom there, we've got some books. I've got more taxidermy here. This is one of my favorite bats that I own. I love that. My boys love looking at that as well. I've got the little theater, um, theatrical mask there. I love wearing that occasionally. More books, a lot of spiritual books, Dracula books. There's a butterfly I did, but yeah, the fucking wing fell off. It's still there. It's just dropped to the bottom of the frame, so I need to repair that. More black and gold everywhere. I love those little display cases there with the, the fake ferns because there's not much sun in that room. The crystal up there is my grandfather's. I just filled it with um, red water to make it look like blood. <laughs> Another beautiful butterfly there. It's this gorgeous, vibrant teal. This magical bit of furniture here is my coffin shoe case built by my dad. I just absolutely love it. He said it was an absolute bitch to make because of all the angles. And I actually asked him to make a second one because I filled it up quite quickly. And he said I was like absolutely lucky to get the first one. So <laughs> thanks dad. I really like that I made the back of it white instead of black because I have threaded the whole thing with the LED lighting again. And at night that just looks dope as fuck. And when I photograph it or hit it with these green lights that I've got on now, it gives a really creepy vibe. So just keep that in mind that even though you're goth, you can definitely integrate a lot of color into your bedroom. I've been buying a lot of secondhand stuff lately on Depop. If you haven't used Depop before, check it out. I've got a lot of my clothing actually on sale there because I've just got so many things that I don't wear anymore and I'd rather it go to a good home than just rotting away in my wardrobe. <laughs> So all of these shoes are quite new for me. I've got these ones. They were like $20. They're Iron Fist. Absolutely gorgeous, like pink velvet with sequins that are in the shape of skulls. They're just fucking beautiful. Ah, they, I didn't realize as well, but these ones are also Iron Fist. I can see the similarity in the brand now, but I'm absolutely loving them. That little kind of bootlet thing that looks so cute with tights or skinny leg jeans. These ones here are Killstar. These were online, I think from Dolls Kill. There's another pair of Killstar there. And just some other brands that I don't even know. I'm not like a crazy brand person. You know, I have the brands that I like, but I don't, I won't wear something just because it's a brand at all. I just, I just, if I like it, I will wear it. And I really don't give a fuck who it is. <laughs> here we have a gorgeous tarantula that I picked up from an Etsy seller. I get most of my um, taxidermy from Etsy. This is a Sourpuss coffin uh, display case that I put my perfumes in. I've got two next to a mirror. And here are some of my butterflies. Most I've done myself, apart from that red one just there. Here are some little moths. I am not the greatest at this. I keep breaking off the damn antennas, but I do love how they look. The last little area that I want to show you is of course my wardrobe. I absolutely love the spaciousness of this. And it was actually really cheap. If you're looking at installing one of these yourself, I actually got this from Ikea and it was really, really reasonable. They sell them in one meter sections, so I got four of them and they have this really cool software that allows you to put it together and put in your room dimensions and really mock up your ultimate kind of wardrobe um, online and it was free. It was really kind of cool. I really enjoyed being able to do that and put it together and really being able to utilize and maximize the space that I had um, in the room. Here I've got my short sleeve tops. The next section I've got dresses arranged in summer dresses and winter dresses. Next section is my ridiculous uh, fur coat selection and long sleeve tops. I will go through and show you some close ups of them. If you follow me again on Instagram, you'll see that I'm always wearing jackets. It's, I don't like winter, I don't like being cold, but the one thing I do love about it is the fashion and being able to wear outrageously ridiculous jackets, which you can't otherwise do. The Australian summer is just so brutal. The other thing that I really love about these IKEA wardrobes is that they had these red jewelry trays. They came in different colors, I think like white and black, but that is just awesome. As you can see, it's not very organized, so we're not gonna <laughs> look at that today. But I love that that kind of sits above my lingerie drawers and I can just pull it out. And it's just a little touch of glamour that, again, I think the inserts were like $24.95. They weren't at all expensive. So if you haven't gone to Ikea, check them out. This is not sponsored by Ikea at all. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's taken me a really long time to film it for you. We're on about, I started at 8.30 and it's now 4 a.m. So it's probably been the longest video I've ever filmed. I'm doing it all myself as well, so it's gonna take me a little minute to actually fucking edit it. Oh, I forgot to mention here, I put my hats as well. 
I do like hats. I like how they can like totally change the look of an outfit. I just, I love hats. <laughs> As you saw over on my vanity, I just put some nails in the bricks and that's where I hang my hats. And I think that's a really cool um, way of displaying your hats and kind of turning them into a, a piece of art, not just like an, uh, an accessory. So please comment down below. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Share it with someone that you think might like some of my styling or just might enjoy seeing how um, my bedroom looks. Subscribe if you haven't already and come and follow me on Instagram. I'd love to see you there and of course to let you know when I've got new merchandise dropping or when my singles are out which will be later this year 2022. <laughs> I hope you're all well and fabulous. I'll see you in the comments. See you next time. I just got up because something smelled like it was burning and usually when something smells like it's burning it's because fucking something is at making a room as creative as you want to be musically or just in general oh my fucking god i just set myself on fire <laughs>